Um, I'm Deb, and I'm here to sort of present on um, closing the AI accountability gap. Um, so this is joint work with Andrew Smart and um, a whole host of other incredible people um, at Google, and I kind of did this as a fellow at Partnership on AI and also a mentee at, the, in, at Google. Um, so imagine uh, you're, oops, no, how do I go back? Uh, sorry, having, okay. I was gonna say, um, imagine you're on a product team um, at a company um, named Company X, that's sort of a software uh, consultancy company. And they get a request from a client to sort of build uh, a new application for a photo booth um, where you can, detect, uh, the, you can detect the smiles on the faces of the people you're taking a picture of and then use that to automatically trigger uh, the photo taking function of the booth. Seems pretty you know, straightforward. However, there's an issue where uh, company X has actually recently implemented a bunch of AI principles. So they've said, they've kind of declared a public commitment to privacy, fairness, um, safety, and it's unsure sort of how these principles will relate to the practice of actually implementing the algorithm itself. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why this isn't. Should I put it here? Oh, okay. So we currently have um, a set of tools to help us reason and think about this. We have some things actually developed from the Fat Star community itself where we um, propose certain documentation to support the translation of principles to practice, something that we label the Algorithmic Accountability Act, uh, uh, Accountability Gap. Um, so we have you know, product requirement documents that can help us think about this. We also have proposals for model cards, which is a way to sort of uh, document the performance of the model and declare some level of intended use. We also have this idea of data sheets, which is a method to sort of systematically characterize the nature of the data. However, there's still a lot of uh, limitations of the current toolbox. So for one thing, you know, we don't really have a sense of what's happening across the pipeline. Model cards and data sheets addresses very specific points in the development process, and there's nothing that really encompasses the whole story of that product. We also don't necessarily have a lot of tools that enable proactive and actionable interventions. There's nothing about ownership, so there's no way to relate the different stakeholders involved. Um, and then also the fact that there's no real uh, you know, articulation of causal relationships between specific design decisions and any of these failures that might relate to particular ethical principles. And then finally, you know, it's very difficult to remember and think about these ethical principles in very large, complex systems. When you're working with a product that involves multiple algorithms interacting in different ways, uh, it becomes very easy to sort of forget about these principles. So we, uh, we did a thing where we sort of looked at different industries where they have they're working with complex algorithms already and they're already kind of in highly regulated spaces or spaces with high ethical sort of standards and very principled approaches to development. And we said, you know, what are these communities doing that we could actually learn from in the, you know, product development space in AI? And are there any tools, particularly documentation practices that might actually be relevant in terms of helping us address this accountability gap? Um, so we, you know, we have the, they, all these different communities had something very similar to the proposals that we see coming out of this, uh, out of the Fat Star community, but we also identified sort of uh, 10 other documents from different uh, industries that would be relevant for us to start thinking about in the AI product development cycle. Um, and I don't really have time to go through all 10 of these, so I'm just going to focus, oops, sorry, very tricky I'm just going to focus on um, the failure modes and effect analysis uh, document and go really into how that particular document, in addition to all of these others, helps us address the question of accountability in AI development. I'm like, I don't know why. Am I pointing in the wrong way? Oh, okay, it's the right side of it. Oh, okay, that's why. Uh, <laughs> it was like 10 minutes into the presentation, I figure out how to figure to do the clicker. Um, but I'll, I'll talk about the failure modes and effect analysis document. So this is a really um, interesting document from the, kind of inspired from uh, similar practices in aerospace. So this document, the goal of this document is to sort of list out uh, the key features of a particular product or a particular algorithm and to say, okay, you know, given this feature, how do we expect this feature, uh, if this feature kind of works as expected, you know, what is the, 
what is the sort of intended impact or the in expected sort of intended response of this system? Okay, what, a, what, and then we sort of start imagining failure modes to say like, what would happen if this intended response was to go wrong in this way and in this way and in this way? And then given these different failures, what are the consequences that can arise from this? And you use that line of reasoning in order to outline the severity of the failure, so how bad would it be if this thing was to fail, but then also think about, you know, how easy is it currently with the present version of the system to actually trace back that failure and characterize that failure within the context of the algorithm or the product. Um, so I'm going to give you an example from aerospace, and then I'm going to sort of relate that to our example in AI, so uh, in just like a general AI product. So in aerospace, we, you know, I have the example of the infamous MCAS system of the Boeing 747 airplanes, and this is an algorithm algorithm which had a feature which was to sort of stabilize uh, the movement of the plane. Um, so if the plane is at a wrong angle, this algorithm was supposed to detect that it was at a wrong angle and then uh, control the movement of the plane to actually stabilize it and make it, um, you know, fly at the right at an appropriate angle. Obviously, you know, failure mode of this is, you know, the sensors on the plane read the wrong angle, so the system miscalibrates, or uh, the system doesn't do a good job whether or not it, even if it detects the right angle, might not do a good job actually controlling the movement of the plane, which was the issue that we saw that resulted in sort of the potential for fatal crashes. It's sort of a high severity case when these systems fail. Um, and in the particular case of MCAS, uh, it was low detection. It was very difficult, you know, with the present uh, version of that technology to detect or to understand when the wrong reading was sort of um, encountered for the sensor or when the model did not do a good job controlling the movement of the plane. Um, on the other hand, you know, in a sort of like AI product scenario, uh, you have a system that might be, as I mentioned, you know, a smell detection algorithm to control the function of a photo booth. So, you know, it has a very simple feature, which one feature could be like, you know, detecting a face. And, Ideally, it works, and you detect the face, and you detect the smile, and the photo booth flash goes off, and everyone's very happy. Um, but if it fails, what happens? Well, maybe there's no face detected. Maybe that means that there's no smile detected, so nothing works, and people are very frustrated, and they go online, and they write mean reviews. Um, or a particular demographic does not have their face detected, in which case you have a situation of exclusion, and that relates to sort of the principles of the company around fairness and can kind of relate to those ethical principles that the company has. In this case, it's, a, it's identified as a low severity sort of uh, situation. You know, customer dissatisfaction is awful, but it's not the worst thing that could happen to a person. And in this case also, there's this sort of case of high detection. So because this is related to the data set composition and it's related to a testable sort of feature uh, that's really easy to isolate, it's actually really easy to sort of identify this particular failure. So this document, you know, inspired from the aerospace industry is actually a really interesting way to start thinking about algorithms and to actually sort of map out some of these failures for the sake of accountability to high level principles. Oh, oops. Um, uh, yeah, so I was going to say, uh, we sort of take these new documents and these old documents and we situate them within sort of uh, a set process, uh, which we call sort of the SMACTER framework of internal auditing, and we sort of define an end-to-end -end way of evaluating systematically how some of these um, algorithms work in the product development cycle, and we, uh, we sort of highlight also how some of these uh, documents can be used at different levels of evaluation, so I really recommend that you check out our paper to learn more about these other documents that we've identified from different industries, as well as understand exactly how they can be used uh, as part of an account internal accountability, um, inter uh, as, as part of an algorithmic accountability process. Thank you. <laughs>